Let's bring you one of our top stories now. An independent panel that probed the Palapala farm robbery has found evidence that President Cyril Ramaphosa may have, in fact, been in breach of some anti-corruption laws. It also found prima facie evidence that the president may have also violated the constitution. Ramaphosa has for months now been ducking questions around the theft of millions of rand at, uh, of, in foreign currency, that is, or millions of dollars, I should say, in foreign currency from his farm in Limbopo back in 2020. Now parliament is set to debate the report's findings and the recommendations in five days' time. Let's unpack all of this for you now, bringing Dr. Musubudi Mangena, who's an academic and a former cabinet minister, live to us via our vidaling from Bulukwani this morning. Doc, great to have you on the program. Thanks for your time and patience. So I suppose part of the, what the first question becomes is, how do we make sure that we're not in a situation where we miss the forest for the trees? In other words, we get so bogged down on the detail that we miss the bigger picture of what this report is actually saying. Well, I suspect that we are not doing that at the moment. Um, the report is very clear, although one had uh, read it only uh, uh, briefly and just run over it without analyzing the, uh, the, the many technical things that are there. But um, the, 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 the bit that, that is, is, is in this report is really alarming uh, for the country. Uh, because we have a head of state who is mired in all sorts of ugly things. Um, uh, that shouldn't be surrounding a, a sitting president of a country. And um, I, I think as a country, all we could say is that um, uh, cry the beloved country. Yeah. Uh, for, for, for quite a, a long time to come, uh, th this country will be uh, preoccupied with this kind of thing instead of uh, concentrating on the big issues that face the country at the moment, unemployment, poverty, all those things we, 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 we talk about on a daily basis, and we should not be distracted by uh, this for too long. Hmm. I wonder what the implication of what you're saying actually is. So let me ask plainly. We are dealing with calls from various sectors of society now for the president to step down on just the basis of this report. Are those calls you would back? I'll, I'll, I'll echo that. Um, that um, you know, he had styled himself as uh, somebody who is fighting for for um, a good cause, uh, was fighting against corruption, and um, as an ethical leader, uh, as a moral leader. But uh, as we speak, morally, ethically, and politically, he's in a, in a difficult space. And, um, I, well, well, of course, he might say that um, legally these things are not proven in a court of law and that he can still go there and, and prove his innocence. But the country can afford uh, such a, a distracted um, head of state in such difficult circumstances in which it finds itself. Yeah. So um, I think um, to have uh, a morally and ethically compromised uh, president it's not a good thing for anybody. Sure. You've spoken several times already around the interests of the country, right? And we know that there are potentially several processes that could unfold simultaneously. There's processes within the ANC around how they deal with their leader. And, of course, that may have political, uh, I mean, that may have implications on what happens to the president of the country. But there's also, you know, processes in parliament that ought to follow. From your vantage point, which of these, if not perhaps both, should South Africans be following quite closely, given what's at stake uh, by extension for the country? Yeah, the parliamentary one, because uh, that's, that's a national institution, a very important uh, uh, one at that. One of the three pillars of our state, that is the, the legislature, the judiciary, and, and the, um, uh, what, what is the other one? Um, so, so they, they, they exactly. it is a very important institution and I hope that it is going to act in the best interest of, of the country to ensure that, um, as we say, we, we are able to concentrate on the important one. What the, uh, a political party does, it's a, it's a private matter, but it, it, it so happens that this uh, political party is also the governing party and, uh, what it does uh, affect the country fundamentally. And so uh, one hopes that they will not be thinking in terms of their own uh, party political interests, but uh, thinking in, 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 in terms of uh, what is good for the country. And I think what is good for the country at the moment 
is a leader who is not mired in um, these ugly things that are swelling around him. Um, and, and I suspect that um, if he decides that he is going to fight legally, um, it is going to be a long road. Uh, you know, there are multiple agencies that are investigating him, the NPA, the public protector, uh, the Reserve Bank, um, uh, so many others that are, are, uh, are investigating him. So he, he, sh- he you will probably be distracted for a very long time. Yeah. So the country doesn't need that. And as a country, we also need a, a president we can be proud of, that we look at and our children and everybody look at and, and are proud of him, not one that is uh, mired in questionable ethical and moral issues. Yeah, I, I think the third arm of the state that you're looking for there is the executive. And interestingly enough, Nkosa um, Zanadamini Zuma, who of course we know is a member of cabinet, has already been quoted as saying that as far as the step aside resolution is concerned, um, she believes the president should step aside. But this report, of course, um, goes beyond just um, putting some kind of potential indictment on the president. It also uh, demands a bit more from the other players in the saga, Arthur Frazier, of course, being one of them. And I'm paraphrasing here, but part of what the report says is that if the allegations that Arthur Frazier are making are untrue, there is serious implications. And because of that, Arthur Frazier should be compelled, for one, to reveal the source of his information. Um, and so we, we certainly get a sense that there are a whole lot more people than just the president here who still need to furnish this country with answers, at least if this report is anything to go by. Yeah, yeah. Fraser has been a, 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 a questionable character for, for quite a long time. And the motives for his, his activities, uh, and, and including the, the, the revealing of this information, um, uh, this, his motives are, are also questionable. Mm. Um, and I think that he is cast in a, in a bad light in many ways, if we leave all the other things that um, we might have heard of. You know, he was head of intelligence. And uh, as far as I understand, um, people who are in intelligence hold information, sensitive information about all of us, all of us in this country. And it is not their business to be revealing what they know. And, and, and so if this is allowed to go, it means that um, uh, people in intelligence can wake up any day and go and reveal information about citizens uh, that they have gathered um, in, in, in ways that are supposed to, to assist the state, not ways that are supposed to um, uh, uh, fight uh, personal and political battles amongst themselves. So um, we are seeing that the, 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 the Zondo Commission uh, that uh, these intelligent uh, agencies have been uh, involved, preoccupied with uh, uh, internal party political factional issues, stealing money for that purpose, and so on. We should not have an intelligence uh, agency that is like that, or operatives or leaders of that institution that are like that. Uh, so I, I, I agree that he should be um, uh, investigated and probably action taken against him for uh, what he has done. Uh, but that doesn't take away uh, the fact that uh, uh, the president faces these kinds of uh, allegations against him. Dr. Musibudi Mangena, thanks very much indeed for your take on this incredibly important story. Really appreciate your time this Thursday morning. Dr. Mangena is a former cabinet minister and an academic. When we come back, we stay with the story because Ramaphosa has also said to answer questions in the NCOP with the findings of this report hanging over his head. So how is that likely to unfold? We unpack this leg of the big story in a moment.